currents are primarily caused by the wind and in order therefore to understand currents we need to understand what affects the wind and the Coriolis effect is something that affects the wind on a global scale What affects the wind's direction? Well, the wind is air moving from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. And in general, the equator is a low pressure area and the poles are high pressure areas. Therefore, we would expect the wind uh, to move basically in a straight line from the poles to the equator but it doesn't why doesn't it well the earth is rotating and the fact that the wind is trying to move from the poles towards the equator at the same time the earth is rotating is what causes the Coriolis effect So the Coriolis effect is an apparent curve of the path of different objects as they move within something that's rotating. For us, we're going to focus on the Coriolis effect in wind. Now, we all know that air always moves from higher pressure to lower pressure. So in this diagram here, we've got a high pressure system and a low pressure system. We would assume that the air would want to go from the high pressure system towards the low pressure system and, and it does but since the earth is rotating the actual motion causes that wind to curve to the right at least in the northern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere it'll curve to the left so the wind will do that the wind will curve to the right as it's moving along instead of just going straight from high to low this the reason this happens is because the earth is rotating it's known as the Coriolis effect so if we look at, uh, here's a nice definition for your notes, that the wind appears to curve due to the Earth's rotation. That's why this curve happens. It's all because the Earth is spinning, all because the Earth rotates. If the Earth was staying still, if the Earth wasn't spinning, then the wind would move straight, the air would move straight from high pressure to low pressure. We wouldn't have this apparent curve that we see. If we take a look at a, glo at a globe, here's the Earth. If we put a high pressure here, and let's put a low pressure here, so there's our high pressure and our low pressure, we would assume that the air would move from high to low, and it does. The air, the air is going to try and move from high to low, but it's going to curve to the right. In the southern hemisphere, that curve is to the left. So if there's a high pressure system here, a low pressure system over here. In the southern hemisphere, the air wants to move from high to low, but in the southern hemisphere, that curve is to the left. It sets up certain wind belts or patterns of wind on the Earth. So if I take a look at the Earth here, there's zero degrees, which represents the equator, and I've got a few others on there as well. The wind is going to move towards the equator. The equator tends to be a lower pressure area. So as the wind is moving towards the equator, it's going to curve to the right. So between 30 degrees north and the equator, the wind tends to move like this. In the southern hemisphere, it's the same thing. But remember, now instead of curving to the right, we're curving to the left. A point for your notes then is that the two major elements that cause currents are the wind and the Earth's rotation. Now we understand what affects the wind, we need to understand what affects currents. Well, we know that wind affects currents. And that wind that we have that is curving in one direction in the northern hemisphere in the other direction in the southern hemisphere is why the currents in our oceans circulate in opposite directions. 
in the Northern Hemisphere, the wind's direction causes currents to swirl in a clockwise direction. In the Southern Hemisphere, uh, that same wind uh, that is curving in the opposite direction causes currents to circulate in our oceans in the opposite direction. In the Southern Hemisphere, the currents swirl in a counterclockwise or anticlockwise, if you're British, direction. And that is a very good point for your notes. In the Northern Hemisphere, currents run in a clockwise direction. In the Southern Hemisphere, currents run in a counterclockwise direction. The question may well be uh, more difficult than that, though. They may give you a specific coastline and ask you to explain what direction the current will run in along that coastline. For example, the current along the west coast of North America in what direction will it run? Well, it's either going to run north-south or south-north. Uh, it can't run east-west. It can't run straight through the continent of America. Which way is it going to run? Well, you've got to picture that ocean swirling. Imagine it hitting the coast and think, what direction will it go in given the circular motion of the ocean? And if you look at that circular diagram and look at that coastline, you are hopefully seeing an arrow that is moving basically in a north to south direction. So the currents along the west coast of North America will indeed be running in a north to south direction, which explains why that polar northern water running down the west coast of North America is cooling uh, the entire west coast of North America and even though places like Los Angeles and San Diego are very warm most of the year round the water off those coasts are very cold. What about the coasts, uh, the currents along the coast of Europe? Well arguably Europe only has one coast, uh, the west coast and it's again looking at those arrows you will see that the arrows, the circulation of the ocean, will have the water running in a north to south direction. So you've got cold polar water moving being drawn down those coasts, and that would again explain why on those coasts you have some uh, very cold water. I chose a world map for this uh, diagram uh, that gives precedence to the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans to make it easier to draw diagrams on it. And the next question we've got here is going to now focus on the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, and I've made a little bit of a typo. I meant to write South America, not South Africa. I'm too used to world maps that have the Greenwich Meridian in the center of them. It doesn't really matter though, because when you get a question asking about uh, the continents, it's the whether it's a southern continent or a northern continent, and whether it's the west coast or the east coast that really matters, whether it's Africa, America, makes no difference to what your answer will be. So when you look at questions in the southern hemisphere, uh, obviously that last question that we just looked at there, uh, it was the west coast of South America, and of course uh, we could see that the arrow was circulating the ocean from a south to north direction. If we look at the east coast of South America, we can see that the arrow is circulating the water in a north to south direction, and that is ha basically how you answer these questions. Um, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is obviously explained by what we've just been looking at here, that circulatory motion of the Pacific Ocean and all the garbage collecting in the middle of it. There's a lot all of us can do to reduce our use of uh, plastics, particularly single-use plastic. Say no to straws, say no to styrofoam boxes. To answer a question in the exam, here's the doodle I would draw on a bit of paper. If the question was asking about a continent in the Northern Hemisphere, I would just draw a line and then the left of the line represents the west coast, the right of the line represents the east coast. I can draw my 
clockwise direction circle because I'm in the northern hemisphere and then I can clearly see that on the west coast that arrow is pointing from the north to the south. On the east coast my arrows are showing me that in the northern hemisphere the currents along a northern hemisphere continent would run from the south towards the north. If the question was asking about a southern hemisphere continent, South America, South Africa, whatever it may be, I can draw my same line. I can draw the west coast to the left of the line. I can draw the east coast to the right of the line. And then I can draw my circular arrows going in a counterclockwise direction because it's the southern hemisphere. And that shows me that on the west coast, they would be running from the south towards the north and on the east coast they would be running in the opposite direction they would be running from the north towards the south I don't want to labor the point but too many people answer this question wrong in my IDCs and now we have covered currents uh, watch these videos in the order they're intended to be watched in at www.goprocaribbean.com and don't forget to like this video.